Holy shit. I just posted a usenet from my own OS. Up to this point, I always saw networking as this scary thing that only people with decades of experience can understand. I never really touched anything related to this field previously. Well, something changed. Yeah, nothing changed. I just really wanted to communicate with the internet from CabOS. Networking as a concept is just bytes sent to a card that connects to a local network with a router that handles packets that need to go beyond it. There are just standards built on top of each other that get precedingly more complicated. On this layer, you are sending raw frames using a network interface, typically referred to as a network card. Anyways, on our last CavOS video, I showed you how I could use a PCI to detect devices and also initiate the NE2K network card. Ever since, I went with a slightly different card, the Realtek RTL 8139, as it was easier to implement. Or at least that's what you would say if you were an experienced driver writer. To me, the whole thing just seemed hacky and plain wrong. Keep in mind that every device in the market has a different process for initialization and other stuff. PCI device run apart, I got back a MAC address from the NIC, made functions for sending and also managed to process received bytes via PIC interrupts. Now we were ready to go up a layer to layer 2. Within a local network, you have a lot of devices, right? Yeah, how do you identify them? If you say with a local IP address, you would be wrong. There's a thing called MAC addresses that you might have seen before on your TV. Those are unique to each device and are basically what is used to communicate between devices at this layer. Its so-called frame is sent from one MAC address to another. A question I had in the start was what if you wanted to send frames outside the local network? To the rest of the world, you know? Well, you really can't. When you go to a website, you're not sending a request to that website. Instead, you send a request to your local router, which is what basically, well, routes the request to the server you want. But I never talk to devices with their MAC addresses. I always use local IPs. We never have to interface with MAC addresses because of the ARP protocol. It basically binds IPs to MACs. Here comes the IP protocol. This layer is just used for adding the IP factor to a request apart from the MAC address we talked about earlier. Since, if you remember correctly, non-local servers do not have MACs. Remember, we're using the router for that. Implementing IPv4 was just a matter of writing C structures and establishing functions that can reliably send and receive packets. We are currently on layer 4. Here is the transport layer where we use standardized ways to send stuff back and forth. Before implementing something real, I wanted to send a simple ping to an IP. The protocol used for that is ICMP. With that, you can ask an IP, hey, are you up? And it will respond, yes, I'm good. Or... Yeah, it can just ghost you. Implementing ICMP was incredibly simple, as it isn't meant to carry any data. It's more of a health check. Before you leave the video, UDP is thought to be complex, but in reality, it's the most simple thing I've done so far. It just gives you two ports, the client one and the server one. The funny thing is that people are scared of UDP, while it's just sending data with no metadata. Seriously, no opening connections, no closing them, no safety features, you just send bytes back and forth with two port numbers. DHCP is also misunderstood quite a bit. All it does is ask your network for some info you can use. It's more of a helping hand than an annoyance as after implementing it, you never really have to hard code IPs again. I'm not even going to lie, I didn't want to implement TCP. It's complex, has an exhausting amount of options and parameters, making it difficult to understand. I spent more time trying to wrap my head around package dumps 
from existing operating systems than actually writing code for it. TCP gives you security that you are always getting the whole package, even if it's lost when routed. TCP also gives you state feedback instead of just guessing whether or not a connection is open. My implementation is beyond naive, as I kinda rushed the TCP layer to make this video, but I guess it works. If you stay to this part of the video, you also get to see the actual fun and rewarding part of this massive journey. This was the first website on CavOS, example.com. This is CavOS actually posting and reading from Usenet. And here CavOS is just connecting to an IRC server. On this part, I'd like to thank my friend Elia. He helped from the start with understanding some layers while actually hosting the Usenet server and teaching me how to use it. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone and remember to stay safe.